Now, how many of you have ever been invited to a wedding? Yeah, most of you, right? I've been invited to a wedding. You can't wait to get there. You can't get wait. Well, that's what we're doing here at the Mass now. It's communion time. We're being invited to a wedding. We're invited to a wedding. The new prayer that the priest is going to say to you is, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Whoa, where does that come from? Where does that come from, the supper of the Lamb? Well, if we go to the book of Revelation, we see, Then the angel said to me, write this, Blessed are those who have been called to the wedding feast of the Lamb. And he said to me, These words are true, they come from God. I fell at his feet to worship him, but he said to me, Don't, I am a, worthy, I am a fellow servant of yours and your brothers who bear witness to Jesus. Worship God, witness to Jesus in the spirit of prophecy. Yeah, the wedding feast of the Lamb. That's what we're, that's what we're going to. Jesus, Jesus, body and blood, is the, is the meal that God has prepared for us to strengthen the Jesus that lives within us. You know, to build up. It's not, the, not the, a new Jesus that we're getting. He's, Jesus is coming to build up what is within us. You know, it's rather interesting to me. I had a, I had experience. I don't. I share this once in a while. I had experience when I was helping out one of our Benedictine monks had a parish up in the Thumb area, up in uh, Michigan. It was a city called Bad Axe, Michigan. That's A X E. Okay, <laughs> A X E. Okay, Bad Axe. I know why you're laughing over there, yeah, okay. But anyway, they, 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 it was a rare, rather farm country, and it was some, one of the families had a slaughterhouse, okay? So I always wondered how the meat that we eat gets to us. You know, where does it start? Yeah. I mean, I knew it started from cattle, you know, and steers, but how does it get there? Okay, so anyway, so I, they invited me to watch one day when they were doing some slaughtering, okay? so. I get there, and they, 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 bring the, they bring the steer into a very closed pen, and then they uh, sort of conk him on the forehead with a hammer that has a, 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 a shell in it, so it, it goes off like a gunshot, you know, so when they hit him, it really bangs, you know, and it knocks the, knocks the steer out, okay, so the steer is unconscious. Then they drag the steer inside and hang the steer up by the hind legs, okay, by a hind leg, they hang the steer up from the ceiling, and then they cut the jugular vein. They cut the jugular vein and all the blood drains out. All the blood drains out. And once the blood is drained out, the steer is dead. And, you know, with all these sacrifices that the Jews performed in, uh, in the Holy Land, you know, all those, all those sacrifices, they recognized the fact that when an animal had shed all its blood, when all its blood was drained out, the animal was dead. Therefore, where was the life in the animal? It had to be in the blood. It had to be in the blood because once it was drained out, the animal was dead. And so the separation of the blood from the body was signified death. And that's why, and that's why to this day, the, the Jewish people do not eat any meat with blood in it. They don't drink blood. You know, that's, that's, not something that, that's not something that they will share because that's the life of the animal that they have just sacrificed to God. And so do you ever notice at Mass? Sometimes we don't. Do you ever notice that Jesus, following the rite that Jesus prescribed for us, the priest takes bread and says, this is my body. And then he takes wine and says, this is my blood. They're separated to remind us that Jesus died for us. The blood and body and blood have been separated, so Jesus has died for us. And this is what we're remembering as we bring down this sacrifice from heaven to, to our altar to share in this wonderful, wonderful gift that God gave to each one of us. And then before communion, something that very few people notice because they're listening, they're singing the song or something, but the priest will break the precious body, break the precious body to remind us how body, Jesus' body was broken on the cross. And a piece of that precious body is reunited with the blood in the chalice. A little piece of that precious body is put into the chalice of the precious blood to remind us that Jesus has risen from the dead. And when we receive communion, it's not the dead Jesus we receive, but the risen Christ that we receive in Holy Communion. So here we are now, we're invited. We're invited to come to the wedding feast 
of Jesus. We're invited to come forward to the wedding feast. So basically, we're coming down the aisle. We're coming down the aisle to communion, and we are the church. We're the bride. Jesus is the head. He's the groom. Jesus is the groom, and the church is the bride. So as we come down the aisle, we're coming up to, re- to meet our groom, to receive our groom, to really share. And so how do we come down? Well, the church wants us to come down to meet our groom the way the centurion did in the gospel. You know, the centurion had a sick, had a sick servant at home, and he knew that Jesus, this Jewish teacher, this Jewish teacher could heal Jesus. I mean, his, his servant. He could heal his servant. But he, and, and he says, well, you know, I'm going to go ask him. I'm going to ask him for help. Maybe he, he, I know he can do this. So here he is, a centurion. A centurion gets his name from the fact that he has 100 soldiers under him. Okay, so he's a very powerful man. But he humbled himself to ask this Jewish teacher for help. So humility is the first thing that we need as we come down that aisle to meet the groom. We have to be humble to recognize that He is our Lord and Savior. He's the one who sacrificed His life on the cross so that we could be free. So we need humility. But then also, He also, He knew that Jesus, in performing miracles, always touched the person. He either touched their eyes to give them sight, or he touched their tongue to bring back speech, or they touched their ear to give them hearing, or he re- grabbed their hand to raise them from the dead. But he always touched. He always touched them. But he had so much faith in Jesus that he said, you know, Lord, you know, I'm not worthy that you enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my servant will be healed. Only say the word. And so that's the other element that we need as we approach the Eucharist. The humility of that centurion to recognize that here we are approaching Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and the faith that here he is coming to me. He lives within me. I believe it from my baptism and confirmation. The Trinity lives within me. But here's Jesus coming to me to give me new life, to strengthen that life that is within me. I'm going to share his body and blood that he gave me as nourishment for my soul. And so we're going to respond then at that point, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. A new, a new way of looking at, at the reception of Holy Communion, a new way of looking at so many different parts of this Mass. There's so many things that we do in church that are symbolic, that we, that we completely miss because we haven't, we haven't thought about it.